Welcome to our Thursday movie night. We love the TV series called The Chosen. I'd like to remind you that to watch the actual episodes, you're going to need to go to thechosen.tv to watch them. You can watch on a browser, or better yet, download the free app, and you can watch on your mobile device. And some smart TVs now have an Angel Studios app as another way to watch all the episodes for free. Again, let me repeat, due to some new copyright changes, we are not going to be able to show the actual episode here on our YouTube channel. So you will need to watch the episode either on the website or one of the apps. I'd like to encourage you to also be sure to turn on closed captions. You'll get a whole lot more out of the episode if you do. It's our hope that this little intro that we give each week will give you just a bit of a boost so you can better enjoy the series. First, a segment we call In the Scriptures. You may want to jot down some of these verses so that you can look them up later. John 1 verses 43 through 51. This is the main, the main passage behind the episode. This is where the Apostle John records how Jesus asks Philip to follow him. Then John records that Philip finds his friend Nathanael and told him that they have found the Messiah. When Nathanael replies with that typical, can anything good come out of Nazareth line, Philip responds with a classic line, come and see. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 5, this is that great Jewish passage known as the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You're going to hear someone recite this. Psalm 102 verse 2, you will also hear the same character recite this verse several times. The psalmist writes, Psalm 102, he says, do not hide your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me in the day that I call. Answer me speedily. Ezekiel 39 verses 9 through 10, all of the disciples are going to quote this together. You've heard us teaching about the great war coming in these last days, the Gog and Magog war. The disciples are also aware of this prophecy, and together they quote Ezekiel chapter 39, verses 9 through 10. See if you can see if you notice where it's coming from. As with the other previous episodes, some of this episode will introduce things with which we have no record of Jesus or the disciples saying or doing. But the principles that are being laid out are generally very consistent with the character of Jesus as well as the, the cultural background of how people lived in the first century. In a way, this is not much different from when a pastor teaches you about the culture and the language of the Bible. There is a lot to be learned when it comes to the background of what we read in Scripture. But if your only ideas about Jesus come from watching The Chosen, you are cheating yourself. As the producers of The Chosen will encourage you, make sure you are reading from your Bi reading your Bible, and especially the Gospels for the best information. It's the Bible we build our lives on, not The Chosen. Now, for a section we call Terms and Practices, let's start with some geographical terms. Bashan. This is the region of Israel in the north on the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus and his disciples are no longer in Samaria, but they are now in the Bashan. Caesarea Philippi is a city in Bashan. It's a Roman city, not a Jewish city. It's located at the base of Mount Hermon. It's filled with pagan temples and especially one to the god Pan, Pan like Peter Pan. Today it is known as Banyas, based on the name Pan. This is where Jesus would ask his disciples, who do men say that I am? That won't be in this episode, but this is where it happens. Syria, just like today, the land of Syria was to the north of Israel. Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Syria. In the next episode, you'll find Jesus and his disciples in Syria ministering to the sick and poor. Cana, someone refers to what Jesus did in Cana. Notice how close it is to Nazareth. In the last season, episode 5, that's where Jesus turns water into wine. 
It was his first public miracle. And after that, it became known that Jesus was something special. Bet Midrash, or Beth Midrash, or Beit Midrash. This is, the, this is a term that means, in Hebrew, house of learning. The episode, this episode is using this term to describe what we might call Jewish school aimed at young boys. It involved studying and memorizing the Hebrew scriptures. Hubris or hubris, some of you may be unacquainted with this term. It's a Greek word. It simply means pride. Fig tree, there will be a character who will go out in a field and sit down under a tree. It's a fig tree. There is something deeper here that you might not catch. According to rabbinic tradition, fig trees were frequently cited as appropriate places for teachers to discuss the meaning of the scriptures with their students. Keep that in mind when one character is sitting there talking to God. Ashes, you will see a character pouring ashes over their head. For the Jews, this was a way of expressing deep loss, mourning, or sadness. You can see examples of this in 2 Samuel 13, verse 9, and Esther chapter 4, verse 3. Carpenter, this, this term isn't, isn't used or focused on in the, in the episode, but I want you to think a little outside of the box tonight. It, it has been a tradition in the Christian church to call Jesus a carpenter. And with that, we think of him as a woodworker with hammers, saws, and chisels. And the Bible tells us that his dad, Joseph, was a carpenter. That's Matthew 13, 55. And yes, the Bible tells us that Jesus was a carpenter. Mark 6, 3, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary? But keep in mind, the Greek word translated carpenter in the New Testament is tekton. Tekton, which can mean builder artisan, or craftsman. If you think about it, the land of Israel is known more for being a land filled with rocks and stones than it is with wood. The word tectone can just as much be about shaping stone as it is wood. Peter will write about how Jesus is shaping us as living stones into a temple. 1 Peter 2.5 says, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house. Now why bring this up here? The episode we are watching will end in the city of Caesarea Philippi. Though it is not brought up in this episode, this is where Jesus will one day ask his disciples, who do men say that I am? When Peter responds by saying that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus says in Matthew 6.18, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now, there's a lot of ideas packed into this verse, but let me just say that the ministry, that the ministry of Jesus, the stonecutter, is all about taking us, like Peter, as living stones and building his church with us. In this episode, you're going to watch Jesus working to shape his living stones, even adding an architect into the mix. We might call this process of shaping discipleship. You will hear Jesus challenging the architect about building something that will cause prayers, songs, and bring souls closer to God. That's the church, not a building, but a spiritual house of people. Lastly, a section we refer to as characters. I'm hoping that by now you are quite familiar with Jesus and the disciples. Tonight, we will add two more characters. Philip has been a follower of John the Baptist, whom Simon Peter likes to call Creepy John. In a way, because of his following John the Baptist, Philip has been a disciple longer than Jesus' disciples. Keep that in mind. Nathaniel is a friend of of Philip's. His name means God-given. We are introduced to Nathaniel as an architect, but I, I, I could find nothing in scripture nor in history validating this. Just take this as character development and a way of weaving some plot points together. Don't make too much of it. To find out more about The Chosen, in a moment we will be asking you to go and watch tonight's episode. How do you do that? You can open your browser on your computer and go to thechosen.tv on the web, 
or download the free app on your mobile device. If you are on a smart TV, you may be able to add an Angel Studios app to watch the episode. Be sure you are watching Season 2, Episode 2, titled, I Saw You. We also encourage you to give your financial support to the project. We do. We'd also like to encourage you to think about hosting a watch party. Even if you've already seen each episode, we are finding it so much more fun and edifying to watch with others. After you've watched the episode, head back to the church YouTube channel. We will follow up each episode with a live discussion in our office studio unpacking and exploring some of the themes and ideas that came up in the episode. We'll start as the credits are rolling. If you have any questions or comments you'd like to share during our post-episode discussion, just text the church office at 714-879-3314. We'll do our best to address as many of the comments as we can. So here we go. Go and watch the episode, and we'll see you back here afterwards for for our discussion and that'll be in about 50 to 55 minutes. <laughs> 